Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Uh, look, uh, I've addressed this a little bit on a couple of different platforms. Uh, I'm probably going to do a short write-up on it on the site eventually, but I wanted to drop this in on you. Who knows, maybe by the time I actually get this to you guys, I will have already done the write-up. Uh, but everybody's talking about Snoop's apology and weighing in on it. Uh, you know, I, I've talked about um, where I felt when I came out, I Im immediately addressed what Gail did. Then the next time I talked about it was addressing uh, the ability to go after and say things and do things in a certain way. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily require derogatory comments, name calling uh, and threats. I think that certain threats need to be implicit uh, depending on where you're at in the movement and it doesn't need to be stated. One of the things that I've learned over time uh, as I've grown and aged is that by the time you know I have an issue with you, you will feel me. All of the pre-bolstering, it's something my grandfather taught me a long time ago. He saw me out there going at it with one of the kids. I was in elementary, I was going at one of the kids and we were both talking about what we were gonna do and come on, come on, come on and all that. And he said, while you standing up there spit boxing with this kid, you get your head knocked off. You got a problem with somebody, let them know you got a problem with them by how you make them feel your presence. And so that's the way I am. But Snoop uh, was, you know, checked by Susan Rice in a way that backed him into a corner. And even though I believe that what he did wasn't the best way to go about it for a number of different reasons, primarily because he doesn't have the foundation on which to stand to attack a woman, even though it's a woman that I classify as a race traitor. He doesn't have that foundation to stand on to come at a black woman that strong, even though her blackness and the way she uh, represents her blackness is questionable at best because Snoop has made a career out of calling black women the B word. Snoop has made a career out of being misogynistic and mishandling women and, 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 and a number of different things. Uh, he has made a very comfortable living being in that position and he's never clearly divorced himself from the younger Snoop. In fact, he still tours singing some of those same old songs. So in essence, he's not the ideal person to have jumped out there that hard, that strong and came that quick. But when he did it, he put himself in a position where he had to stand on it because the pushback specifically and I think strategically came from um, a female, a black female. Now, that was the Mark Lamont Hills and the Dr. Michael Eric Dysons that came out. Uh, you know, the beta male brigade came out to her defense. But the strongest correction and, 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 and challenge came from black women, specifically Susan Rice, who came directly at him, straight checked at him, like, get your together, or this is what's going to happen. And I want to be very clear. When Susan Rice said that you, you don't want this, you know, and she mentioned the term army, she wasn't talking about the U.S. military. She was talking about white mainstream media. See, that's how Snoop eats. Snoop enjoys the comfort of his life because he's got a place in white mainstream media. He's got TV shows. He's got all these connections with uh, Martha Stewart. Uh, he's got that game show thing. All of that stuff comes from white mainstream America. That's your white crossover audience. And what she's saying is with the, within, with the quickness, that can be snatched away. That you could be painted in a light that nobody wants you nowhere near their screen or, or whatever. And the passes that they've given you. And see, the thing is, notice that mainstream media doesn't care that Snoop has had a career of disrespecting black women. Why? because it doesn't impact them. It doesn't impact their narrative. It actually plays out better that he plays he's, he plays nicer with an older white woman than he has with black women, uh, even when it comes to his wife. I mean, the respect that Snoop has shown for his mom and grandma are different. And even then, there, there are some things that can be brought out. And, and, and don't get me wrong, 
every last one of us have things in our closet. But hopefully, when we get ready to make stands this strong, this open, this public, we've had enough time divorced from those old patterns of behavior that people can see the new patterns and know where we're coming from and know that, know that we have, uh, without question, outgrown that old person. I believe that uh, it, it, it presents him as being weak because he was checked by a woman after challenging a woman as if he was the straight up hardest thing there is and then being checked by a woman and then mellowed out to the point to where he apologized. I don't, my whole thing is if you're wrong, there's nothing wrong with apologizing, but you've got to be very careful about the situation you put yourself in because he wasn't back solely out. If he'd have came out and said, you know what? I didn't say it the way it should have been said. I went overboard with it, but my premise is still the same. Gail King is out of line and it's obvious by the patterns of her behavior over time that she is doing this on purpose, that she knows what she's doing and it's targeting a specific male group, uh, particularly the black men. And so I stand by my, 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 my chastisement of Gail. I, while admitting that I went overboard. Now, I can take that. I think the world could take that. But that wasn't going to be good enough for white mainstream media. And so they sick the dogs on him and he had to make a decision. He made the decision by way of money and protecting uh, what he's built, what he's enjoying. And that's going to be the case most of the time. My thing is... Be careful what you say when you step out there. You know, everybody says something that they regret and they end up having to retract. You see me do it on things, but it's my retractions have never been because I went at somebody a certain way and then had to pull back. I don't get into personal back and forth because this thing is bigger than me. It's a bunch of things that I have let slide because I knew me getting into a beef with somebody was going to be detrimental to the larger picture, which is black unity. And I've stepped back, not because I'm afraid. Anybody that knows the younger me knows I don't fear anything. I don't fear any man. I don't fear any system. I came into this game willing to die to be what I was designed to be. And that's who I am. But I don't want to be foolish about it just to prove something. That doesn't have anything to do with the longer picture. So I'm willing to sit back and let somebody take a shot and just live my life because the shots that people take cannot outlast how you live. If you're living good, it's going to be okay. You might take a couple of bumps and bruises when people come at you, but if overall you're living good, if the more, if there are more people who you come in contact that you've done right by and blessed than those that you've pissed off and upset or maybe even done wrong, you're going to be okay. Life is about that. But when you come at somebody the way Snoop came at her and then you got that track record, they just start pulling the receipts. And it's not long before people start to be, be reminded of who was making that statement. And all of a sudden you turn Gail King into a victim. And all of a sudden now we're forgetting what she did and we're focusing on her and Snoop. That's how media sets it up. That's how media plays it. We're gonna kill two birds with one stone. We're gonna shut him down and we're gonna deflect off of what the real issue was. And here we are. My thing is, Snoop didn't go about it the best way, and now he's getting pinched for it. He didn't. He didn't consider all of the factors. He got emotional. Never good for a dude. And he jumped out there. Now he's got put back. And there's so many different ways. I'm just looking. Number one, primarily at the women who actually rolled with him when he did it, who are now calling him, you know, weak because he backed off. And, you know, it's just so much. My whole thing is, again, I have no problem with someone who has done something wrong and apologize. But you apologize for what you did wrong. You don't apologize for what you were standing on or for what you believed in or for what made you so passionate that you went overboard. You still stand on that. You just sit up and say, hey, I didn't go about it the right way. I've thought about it. And, you know, what I want to do is I want to say, and you say it, without the things that you feel you've done wrong. You, you, you change the approach, but you absolutely don't let somebody back you completely out of it. 
But he put himself in that situation when he went hard like that. Now, with that being said, my whole thing is, at the end of the day, Gail King is still Gail King. Gail King is still a race trader. Gail King is still the person that sits up and only targets black men while literally sitting in the lap of white men that are doing far worse. And so my 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 stance is still going to be that. My stance is going to be that no matter what. And I have said it in a way that I will not retract what I've said. I have not called for violence against anybody. I have not sit up and called a black woman, even though I can't stand her, out of her name. Because I don't want to practice that, even when it's a black woman that does not operate in her blackness. I am not going to call her out of her name because that's me. That's my character. That's my integrity. It has absolutely nothing to do with her. It's just the way I'm going to handle it. I mean... She is what she is. She's the enemy as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and some people will say at some point in time, you got to treat the enemy like the enemy. And that's a conversation for another day. But I just want to touch on that whole Snoop Dogg thing and look at how it plays out. And you got to think long term and the bigger picture when you're dealing with stuff like that. And on that note, I'm going to jump off of here. I've almost reached my destination. You guys have a great day.